Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Told the Yahweh. For his mercies endure forever, Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. He hasn't left us behind. He hasn't left us in the dark, Israel. But he reveals unto us his Torah, his mitzvah. It's a precious thing unto us to have his mitzvah, his Torah, his word, Israel. Because it never fails. Without that, what will we have today? Our houses won't save us. Clothing's not going to get us by. Riches and wealth, it's all going to fade away. But the word, the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, his statues, it will never fail. Hallelujah. So let's abide in the statues and the testimonies and the dabar, the word of Almighty Yahweh. Where are the praises amongst Israel? There's a scripture that I read that burned in my love, Yisrael. I was going to save it to the end somewhat of the message, but I want to read it now because we've been talking about the ish, the fire of Almighty Yahweh, how Yahweh divides the flames, how he will not put more on us than we could bear, Yisrael. That alone should bring forth a praise of resilience unto Almighty Yahweh, of comfort. As we commit or commend our nephesh unto him, have we not done that, Yisrael? Do we not trust Abba Yahweh with all things, even with our lives? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But yet it takes the cleansing of his fire, yeah. of the trials, yeah. to purge us and to bring us to the perfection and to the purity that he desires us to be. And unless we're pure, unless we are perfect, unless we are in the image of Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. we cannot please Almighty Yah. So it takes a continual purging, a continual cleansing, a burning Israel, that everything that is in us that is not of Yahweh may be consumed. Don't you know, even by our praises, our testimonies, our offering, our boast, and Yahshua HaMashiach, the mercies of Almighty Yahweh, don't we testify that often, Israel? But where is the proof of that? Should not that message or the amun of that alone should fuel the fire that is within us. It should be even as a fire shut up in our bones that we cannot hold back. Hold back the praises. Hold back his Torah from speaking his mishvah. That's what the fire does. It doesn't allow you to be still. It doesn't allow you to be quiet. As we look upon the western part of the United States as I've heard clippings of the fire, of the torrent fire that goes forth, it consumes everything. It leaves nothing behind. Nothing of any kind of wealth or any kind of substance behind. That's what the fire does. It even reached the heights three, four, sometimes five stories. Can you imagine a fire of that magnitude, Israel? What are you going to do? Men died trying to quench this fire, trying to contain it. Hallelujah. But they could not. It's only by the mercies of Yahweh the fire even died, died down as much as it has, has done, Israel. Yeah. They think they contain the fire, but they cannot contain the fire. Because if they could have, they would have singed it at its peak. But they could not. What stops the fire of Almighty Yahweh from proceeding forth out of our bosom? Out of our mouths, Israel. That's what this scripture I'm about to read concerns. That even by the testimony or the praises, are we purified? Are we cleansed? Well, how can you prove that, Zakir and Yeramia? I can prove it by Torah and by experience. Sometimes it takes the crying. It takes the crying. It takes one falling upon their knees unto Almighty Yahweh. I've experienced that, Israel. The movement of the Ruah. My sins as they come before me, but yet the dom of Yahshua cleanses them all. When the last time we really cried out unto Almighty Yahweh? Tears, palah, and prayer unto Almighty Yahweh. Don't you remember how it felt? I do. I remember how it feels, Yisrael. You feel a type of a cleansing. It seems like there have been a burden lifted off of your back or off your nephesh. A, 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 a sense of freedom. Being set free 
Don't you know, that's what the fire of praise does, Israel. It sets us free. And we cannot praise y'all. We can't open our mouth in the Bible of Almighty Yahweh. Well, you're bound. You're still yet in your sins. The fire of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh does not burn in your nephesh. We should have a fire tonight for y'all. There should be a praise that should continually come forth out of our mouths, Israel. They cannot be contained. They cannot be stopped. Not, not even the waters of the world or the pressures of the world, no matter what they do, can contain this fire of Almighty Yahweh. For even in our praises, and it's our praises that we offer as our offering unto Almighty Yahweh. And by that, it shows the purification of the Torah or the workings of Yahshua HaMashiach in our land. So before I start or get back into the message concerning the issue of the fire, I do want to read this scripture in Mishli, Proverbs. Oh, I didn't even write down the chapter, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But you look for it. Be as the Bereans. It's there in Proverbs Mishli. It says, as the finding pot, the Mishha, the finding pot for silver, is showing correlation. You must have a pot to refine the silver so you can dip out the dross. It says the finding pot. Not just any kind of pot is going to work, Israel. The finding pot for silver. And it says, and the furnace, not a furnace. It can't just be a little wood stove that's not going to produce the heat that it needs to purify gold. It has to be the furnace. Yahweh has placed Yisrael in the furnace. He said, and a furnace for gold, so is a man, a ish. What are we, Yisrael? What is man but just a vessel? What are we but just a pot that Yahweh molds and makes and shapes? Aren't there many vessels in Baya, Yisrael? Vessels of gold, of silver, honor and dishonor. That's what Adam, that's what man is. That's what we are. We are just vessels, Yisrael. Yeah. It says, so is a man. Can someone find that for me, Oxymion? Where this, this scripture is found? I, God, I want the condition to see this tonight. It says, so is a man, a vessel. Should we not contain, what is it? It's vessels. We should contain the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh. We are the buy it of Almighty Yahweh in which his presence should dwell in. Hallelujah. Let me begin. Let me start from the beginning. As a finding pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. But what is that saying? Well, it shows us the examples of that in the first beginning of the the scripture, Yisrael, the finding pot for the silver. You must have the pot for the silver. You must have the furnace for the gold. So much you have the praises, Yisrael. The fire that cleanses us by our praises unto Almighty Yahweh. It's a cleansing process by your praises, by your armulations unto Yah. Giving told out unto Yahweh out of a pure layer. His fire being within our nephesh that cannot be contained. It should consume us, Yisrael. All that we are should be consumed, Yisrael, by the praises or the amulations unto Almighty Yahweh. Does he not desire the praises? Yes, what else is there to offer him? Our obedience is in our praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The way we walk. It's shown in our praise unto Almighty Yahweh. And we find ourselves mom in the presence of Yah. You know what? Some of the best times that I have found myself giving told out unto Yah is when I was by myself. Of course, when we all come together in unity in the body of Almighty Yahweh, there may be one that has the fuel, someone may have the fire. But yet that one, when he stands up with the praises, 
It scatters throughout the whole assembly of Yisra'ya. They set everyone on fire. But yet, when you're by yourself, and the Ruach HaKodesh begins to move, and then it brings your mind to situations and circumstances and things, whether it was in your youth, in your age, that you know it was nothing but the Torah of Yahweh, the hand of Yahweh that has kept you. I find myself many times even driving. The quiet time, not with the radio on, my mind on where I'm going, what I'm doing, but yet the Torah being stirred up in my lair and the tears start to flow and the praises start to come out of my mouth. I cannot contain them. That's what the fire does, just right here. So we must have the praises in our bosom. As a finding pot for silver, a furnace for gold, so is the praises of a man of a vessel unto Almighty Yahweh. It's very important, Yisrael Yah, that we have the praises of this fire that cannot be contained. That when we come into the presence of Almighty Yahweh, whether it's in this bayat or wherever we are, that the fire of the offering unto Almighty Yahweh will go up. Hallelujah. Isn't that a beautiful Torah scripture, Yisrael Yah? Hallelujah. So we must have the praises unto Almighty Yahweh. I do want to step back just a little from where I left off on last Torah scripture truth. If you would turn to Debrium, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Talking about idolatry. Why do, we watch, why do we provoke Yahweh so much, Israel? Don't you know he is jealous? In the sense that we understand jealousy is not even in close proximity of what Yahweh expresses when we turn from his misfire, his Torah, and we seek other, other ways, other path. Don't you know there's only one way that leads to the kingdom or the Melchul of Almighty Yahweh? We find other avenues, other ways to appease ourselves. We allow the world to excite us by the visual or by what we hear. And we turn off the, out of the way of Almighty Yahweh. We allow idolatry, idols. What is that, Israel? Some want to say, oh, it's just the picture. But yes, it is certain pictures. We shouldn't be into what the world uplifts. Or what the world lists on high, we should have seen Yahshua HaMashiach. So if you allow the esteem or the praises to go to someone or something, that is a type of idolatry. It should only be unto Almighty Yahweh. It's more than just what we say are statues and pictures. It's much deeper than that in Yisra'ya. Because in the Bible of Yisra'ya, if you were to read just do a study in Torah, there was all types of beautiful pictures and, and, and images or statues throughout the Bible. But not that we lift them to a pinnacle that we turn our eyes from Yahshua, from the Torah, or from Almighty Yahweh. That's what idolatry is. Do we think Yahweh will let that go unscathed? Do we commit idolatry in his presence? Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Know that now... Therefore, hearken, O Yisrael. Are we hearkening tonight, Yisrael? Our minds and our ears open unto the Almighty Yahweh. O Yisrael, to the statues and not only that, the judgment, the Mishpah, which I teach you. Why? For to do them. What use is there for us to learn of the Mishpah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, to memorize it, to quote it? And yet we do not put them into action, Israel. That you may have the high or live and go in and possess the land which Yahweh, our sovereign ruler of your advice, has given you. Don't you know there's a place, there's a property that Yahweh desire us to have, Israel. It's not for anyone else. Not for anyone else. Just for the bite of Israel, his covenants that he desire us to enter into. He said you shall not add to the Torah, to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish anything from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Almighty, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did because of Belpora. For all the men that followed Belpora, Yahweh Almighty has 
destroy them from among you. But you that did cleave unto Yahweh Almighty are alive, every one of you, on this day. Only by the hand of Almighty Yahweh. He has separated us. He has put us in a place, Yisrael, that he can feed us, nurture us, that we may grow. That this spirit of Belpora will not intermingle with the Israelite, with Yisrael. But you did cleave unto Yahweh. You held fast to Yahweh Almighty and alive every one of us on this day. Verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as Yahweh my Abba have commanded me that you should do so in the land which you are to possess. This is Moshe speaking unto Israel. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom to do them. Not just to hear them, Israel. This is our wisdom to do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and an understanding people. For what nation thereof is so great, who has a sovereign ruler so near unto them as Yahweh our Abba? Is Yahweh our Abba near unto us, Israel? Isn't he yet in our left? Are we yet just vessels? Do we have the fire of the Torah in our left tonight, Israel? Did not the song said the windows of the Shemayims are open? And what the fire of Yah? The coal of Almighty Yahweh. If you recall, it's described as being even his very breath that consumes us, Israel. His Ruach should consume us. Hallelujah. Yahweh our Abba is in all things that we call upon him for. Don't we call upon Yahweh for all things? All things. The tub of perfect gifts come from Yahweh our Abba. And what nation is there so great? that has statutes and judgments, so righteous as all this Torah, which I set before you this day. Altogether, be on your guard. We must be on our guard. So we have the Torah. We must be a people that are skillful in using the Torah. We must be doers and not hearers only, Israel. Altogether, be on your guard. Be on the ready. Be on the, the defense. And diligently watch your nephesh. Diligently. We must diligently watch our nephesh, Yisrael. It's just like a garden. If you're not diligent in a garden, with the weeds, with watering, if it needs watering, fertilizing what it needs fertilizing, what will happen? You will see the weeds come up, and it will overtake the garden. So we have to diligently. You must be diligent. Every little thing you got to have an eye on. You must be aware of it, Israel. Watch your nephesh. Why? Lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen. Have we forgot what Yahweh has done for us? Each and every one of us have a testimony in our bosom. We can look back and say, Yahweh, I know it was you that brought me out of that circumstance. I know it was you for cape, that kept me from being overtaken. Even when I was overtook, yes, Yah, Almighty Yahweh, it was you that brought me out, that delivered me, that set me free. Unless they depart from your love all the days of your life, but teach them to your sons and to your sons' sons. Especially, verse 10, especially the day that you stood before Yahweh, your Almighty, and Horeb, when Yahweh said unto me, Gather me the people together. And I will make them hear my words, my Torah, that they may learn to fear me in some things that, it says what? Oh. Cold, yeah. all things. Hallelujah. That is why we must hear from the message of Almighty Yahweh. That we may learn to fear Yahweh in all things, that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. And you came near and stood under the mount. And the mount burned with ish, with the fire, unto the midst of the Shemayim, the breath of Yahweh, his presence in the midst of the mountain. Not only with fire, but with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. 
And Yahweh spoke to you out of the midst of the fire, and you heard the voice, you heard the words of Almighty Yahweh, but saw no similitude, only you heard his, net, his voice. Do we hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh? Have we seen him, Israel? Hallelujah. No, we have not physically seen him, but yet we have experienced him, Yisrael. Why? And our encounters with his mishpah, with his Torah, with his ruah. How he leads us by the pillar of cloud by day and by the pillar of fire by night, Yisrael. We have seen the actions of Almighty Yahweh in our lives, not only that we've seen it in the Torah. Hallelujah. So we do have an experience with Almighty Yahweh. Only you heard his nephesh, verse 13. And he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them upon the two tables of stone. Don't you know he has written these commandments on the tables of our Lev Yisrael? We have, as a nation, walked hardened, our hearts hard unto Almighty Yahweh, but yet he still inscribed his Torah, his nephesh. Hallelujah. And it took the breaking of Yisrael to bring forth a softness. See, you must understand even the ground. That's the purpose of tilling or prepping the ground, that the waters may penetrate, what they call percolation, Yisrael. Water, it's hard for water to penetrate the ground when it's dry and when it's hardened. It only stays on the surface. But we need to allow the Torah, the Mishra of, our, of Almighty Yahweh, to break up our fallow ground, to plow deep, that the waters of his Ruah may saturate our nephesh, Yisrael, these hardened hearts. Because he has written his nephesh in our love, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And he wrote them upon the two tables of stone, verse 14. And Yahweh commanded me at that time to teach us the statues and the judgments that you may do them in the land where you go over to possess it. But it's one thing that we must not allow, Yisrael, is our lives or our hearts or our minds to be turned from his statutes, to turn from his mishvah or his covenants. He will not break his covenant with Yisrael. But if you do not walk according to his statutes or his mishvah, you will fall from him. Hallelujah. You'll find yourself being removed from him. But we want Yahweh to draw us nearer, Yisrael. Verse 15. Take you therefore, tub he to yourselves, for you saw no manner of the similitude on the day that Yahweh spoke to you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire. He said, lest you corrupt yourselves by not walking in the midst of the statues of Almighty Yahweh and make you a graven image, a similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Did not we experience that in Mizraim? Even after all that Almighty Yahweh had done for Mizra, for Yisrael, out of Mizraim, out of Egypt, still yet, they made a golden calf. What are, are, what are our golden calves, Yisrael? What do we hold as a treasure before Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. Don't you know Yahweh knows all things? Don't you know if we continue in idolatry, not walking according to the strict Torah that he has given us, Yisrael, and it's not hard to walk after the Torah, it's only the sin and the iniquity that are our stumbling blocks, Israel. He has made his Torah simple for us to follow. Lest you corrupt yourself and make graven images or similar to of any figure in the likeness of male or female. Verse 17. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth or the likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air. There are all types of statues and gods that people worship. That they pay homage unto, unto animals, animals that have been put together, some with the heads of dogs, all kind of things, Israel. And they worship them. They, they pay them homage. They give them time. They give them worship. What do we offer unto Yah? 
Where's the fire of the praises that we should offer unto Yahweh continually? Is the fire of his Torah, is it quenched, Israel? It never is quenched. It continues to burn. Hallelujah. So let us offer unto Yahweh the offerings that is due unto him, Israel. Verse 18. It says, all the lightness of anything that creeps on the ground, the lightness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, Unless you lift up your eyes to the Shemayim, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, it will all the hosts of the Shemayims should be driven to worship them and to serve them, which Yahweh Almighty has divided to all nations under the whole Shemayim, the whole heavens. Yahweh has created all these things. And it's Yahweh that has set the stars in their place, each and every one of them. The earth and the moon, the animals, the fire. We should see those things, and it should turn us unto Almighty Yah. For it is Him that created all things, Israel. Yah. But Yahweh has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. Has He brought us out of the furnace, Israel? Yah? Have we not separated ourselves from Israel and from Egypt? Are we not a peculiar people unto Almighty Yahweh, set apart for his service, for his praise, even out of Egypt to be to him a people of inheritance? Inheritance? What does Yahweh have to offer Yisrael? Did not we read about the fowl of the Shemayim, the earth, the moon, all these things are Almighty Yahweh's. But yet, he has given these things as an inheritance. His Torah, has not his Torah or the word of, all, of Almighty Yahweh created all things? And he has given us a part or an inheritance, Yisrael, to be to him a people, a nation of inheritance, as you are this day. We have so much, Yisrael, we don't even know it. We can't even grasp it. It's hard for the mind of the left to even phantom all the things that Yahweh has in store. Not just what we see, but what we have not seen. Only the bits and pieces that we hear of in the Torah of, of, of Yahweh's Mitzvah. Us to be an inheritance, Yisrael. That alone should be enough for us to praise Him. To lift up His name. Hallelujah. To Barak Him. That we are a people of inheritance. Hallelujah. Verse 21, furthermore, Yahweh was angry with me for your sakes. We know that Moshe, he transgressed on what Yahweh had commanded him. And Yahweh, Yahweh has judged him. Hallelujah. He said, for your sakes, and swore that I should not go, with, uh, go over to Jordan, that I should not go into that tough land which Yahweh your Almighty had given you for an inheritance. Don't you understand the mercies of Almighty Yahweh to the house of Israel? Yah? Have we done anything less than what Moshe done? Have we, Israel? Yah? But yet, the mercies of Yahweh has allowed us to enter into a place that the world cannot enter into. It's more than just a physical place, Israel. Yah. But it's a, it's a state of mind. It's standing on the promises of Almighty Yahweh. Being rooted and grounded in the Torah, Yisrael Yah. Which Yahweh your Almighty has give, gives unto you for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. It must not go over to Jordan. Don't you know there's a Jordan for Yisrael Yah? What is not, was there not Gosha in the land of Mizraim? Don't you know Yahweh still yet has a place? That he has a name? For each and every one of us, a place is his, in his Melkut, Yisrael, yeah, in his kingdom. But he said unto Moshe, but you should not go over and possess that tough land. Verse 23. Take heed to yourself. Don't you hear the continual warning? Yeah. We must take heed, Yisrael. Yeah. How do we take heed? By allowing the fire to burn in our nephesh. Lest you forget the covenant of Yahweh your mighty, which he had made with you, and make to you a graven image or any likeness of anything which Yahweh your Almighty has forbidden you. Verse 24. 
For Yahweh, your servant ruler, is a consuming ish. He is a consuming fire. He doesn't leave any residue. When the fire rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah, and I will get into that, there was nothing left. Sin could not raise its head. It was consumed. Every word of darkness was consumed. Everything that was not of Almighty Yahweh was consumed. There was nothing left, Israel. It's for Yahweh Abba, he is a consuming fire. In verse 24, even a jealous Abba. He is jealous, Israel. He wants us to himself. He's not going to share us with any other nation or any other so-called God. He's not going to allow us to trample the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach no. under our feet, Yisrael. Yeah. Why? Because we belong to him. Yeah. And he's not going to let go of Yisrael, yeah, never. He will give nations for us, Yisrael. Yeah. He will protect us and he shall keep us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even in the fire of his judgment, he shall keep us. Hallelujah. When the fire ran upon Mizraim, was not the people kept in Goshen? Yes, they were. They had to be in Goshen. They could not be anywhere else in Mizraim or they would have been consumed. That's why it's so important for us to stay in our place. To stay where Yahweh has placed us. Where he has planted us. Where we are being fed. Hallelujah. Are not we being fed tonight, Israel? Have not Yahweh fed us? Has he not taught us? statues, his mishva, then why should we turn away? Why should we step out of Goshen? Why should we not want to enter into Jordan? Why should we not want to enter into the Melkut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh? We find ourselves turning every other way. Idolatry unto Almighty Yahweh. Would that and anger him? Would that bring forth the fire of his indignation, his consuming fire? Sure it will, Yisrael. Verse 25. When you shall bring forth children and children's children, and you shall have remained long in the land, and shall have corrupted yourselves, and make a graven image, or anything, or any, or any, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Yahweh, your sovereign ruler, to provoke him to anger. Why we want to provoke Yah? Understanding that he is a consuming fire. He consumes everything that has nothing left. Yisrael, yeah. Why would we want to turn? He's given us an inheritance. He's given us a place to dwell in safety. The Torah in Yahshua HaMashiach. Should we not we, we be in Yahshua HaMashiach? And not only that, Yahshua HaMashiach dwell in our nephesh, in our, in our bodies, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's move on to Numbers, chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. I want to read. And then we're going to move on into Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 1. As we move on concerning the fire of Almighty Yahweh, even his very breath, the coals. Hallelujah. Allow the coals from the Shemayans to fall upon Yisrael. Hallelujah. Midbar, Numbers, chapter 11, verse 1. And when the people complain, do we find ourselves complaining? Yeah. Questioning Yah? Yeah. Yeah. This is not what I expected, all, you know, Almighty Yahweh. This wasn't my plan. But when the people complain, it displeased Almighty Yahweh. He has given Yahshua HaMashiach, his only begotten of his bosom. And yet we complain, Israel, Yah, our circumstances. And Yahweh heard it, and his anger, it says, was kindled. Kindled. So even his ish or the fire of Almighty Yahweh, we know he's a consuming fire. That adds, like they say, fuel to the fire. It kindles. It adds more and more. You know, when you add kindling to a fire, it gets hot quick, does it not? When you put kindling into a fire. And his anger was kindled. And his ish, or the fire of Yahweh, burned among them. His judgment. His judgment burned among them. Why? To consume. But Zakei Yeramiah, you said that Yahweh will not consume Israel. But we must understand, we must stay in the path. We must abide in the place. 
Gosha. We must stay in the place, Israel. You can't move out of your place. You can't transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and not receive the judgment of Almighty Yahweh or the fire of Almighty Yah. And the fire of Yahweh burned among them. Did it say among them? Did it say among the heathen or among other nations? Who are the them? Israel. Burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Verse 2. And the people cried unto Moshe, and when Moshe prayed unto Almighty Yahweh, the fire was quenched. That's why we need a Moshe. Hallelujah. We must have the Nabi. Yeah. We must have those that lead us, that teach us the Mishra and the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. And it said, Moshe, he prayed unto Almighty Yahweh, and the fire was quenched. Yeah. Verse 3. And he called the name of that place Taborah, because the ish or the breath, the fire of Yahweh burnt among the congregation. Hallelujah. We should desire the fire of Yahweh to burn among us, Israel. Not to consume us, not to wipe us out, but to consume all the draws, everything that's not of Almighty Yahweh. That should be a continual prayer for us, Israel. Purge me with hissing, Yah, that I may be cleansed. Wash me, I shall be water as snow. Hallelujah. The fire. We must continue abide in the fire of Almighty Yahweh. Moving on to Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. Hallelujah. Don't we want the word of Yah, Almighty Yahweh to come unto us as it did unto the Nabi? Let you know that is a coal from the Shemayim, his word unto us, Israel. Ezekiel 38, verse 1. And the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, O Ezekiel, son of Adam, set your face against God. And the land of Magog. He says, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubo. The prophecy against them. Verse 3. And say, thus saith the sovereign Yahweh, behold, I am against you, O Gog and Magog, chief of the princes of Meshech and Tubal. Verse 4. He said, I will turn you back. And put hooks in your jaws. Anyone recall me talking about how Yahweh controls the kings? An example, Barack Obama or whoever may be the king of this nation or other nation. The hook of Yahweh are in their jaws, Israel. And if you recall me also talking about Yahweh will not allow anything to happen that should rush upon us that we should not know about. Israel. In Gosha, understood the judgments of Almighty Yahweh because he spoke, unto, he spoke them unto Moshe. So they knew the plans of what Yahweh was about to do concerning Pharaoh. Did not Pharaoh have a hook in his jaw? Yeah. Did not many times after the judgment, each judgment on Mizraim, he said that he would let them go? Sure. Why he didn't let them go? Yes. Because there was a hook in his jaw. Yeah. Yahweh was going to bring, or he has brought honor to his name by using Pharaoh or the king. And so he does time after time, and we see it, Israel. Verse 4, And I will turn you back and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you forth, and all your armies, the horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling Swords. That would seem menacing, wouldn't it, Yisrael? You to see an army with the armament, the swords, the shields. Verse 15. And you shall come from your place out of the north parts, you and many people with you, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. Verse 16. And you shall come up against my people of Israel. Yeah. This great army against the people of Israel was not the hook in the king's jaw. Was not Yahweh steering them. Don't you know the wicked are a tool unto Almighty Yahweh for judgment, Israel, if we don't continue in the statutes of Almighty Yahweh. And you shall come up against my people, the, my people of Israel. As a cloud to cover the land, 
It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring you against my land, that the heathen may know me. When I shall be purified in you, the judgments of my almighty Yahweh. This is a type of a furnace or a trial unto us, just right, y'all. The trial is coming. Have not I spoken, or t don't you remember the Torah, the scripture that says it should not, or the trials of the fire should not be as a strange thing? When we see the world coming against us, Yisrael, did not the world come against Yahshua HaMashiach? Yeah. Even Yisrael, we have fallen short. Hallelujah. That's why I brought Yahweh for the Dharma Yahshua. It's the only thing that yeah. redeems us, Yisrael, yeah. to bring us back into the way. Yeah. But yet, this judgment of Almighty Yahweh fears an army for destruction, to wipe out. That's what armies do. They go and they wipe out. They cleanse, they purify the land. Whether it's by killing or by fire or destroying Israel. He said, I will bring you against my land that the heathen may know me. And then I shall be purified in you, O God, before your eyes. Don't you see the judgments of Almighty Yahweh? Even unto God or this nation. Verse 17, thus saith the sovereign ruler Yahweh, are you he of whom I have spoken of old times by my servants the Nabi of Yisrael, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring you against them? And it came, and it shall come to pass at the same time when God shall, shall come against the land of Yisrael, says Yahweh, that my fury, or his ish, or his burning indignation, yeah. shall come up in my face. Yeah. And in my jealousy, there's the word jealousy again, Yisrael. Yeah. Yah's jealousy. Yeah. And in the fire of the ish of my wrath have I spoken. Yeah. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Yisrael. Yeah. So that the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the Shemayim, and the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, and all men that are upon the face of the earth, shall shake at my presence. This is showing the fiery indignation of Almighty Yahweh upon a nation, upon a people that have turned their backs on Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let you know, Yahweh, he knows how to turn us back unto him, Yisrael, Yah. His reproof, his judgment. He said for us to shub, to turn at my reproof, at my judgment. Hallelujah. Turn unto my, my word, Yisrael. And the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall unto the ground. There's nothing that can withstand Almighty Yahweh in his fierce anger and judgment, Israel. And he said, I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains saith Almighty Yahweh. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands or his armies and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing Rain and great hailstones, hailstones, Israel, fire and brimstone, the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. It sounds like Solomon Gomorrah does it not, Israel. Yahweh, he will rain his fiery indignation upon a people, upon a nation that do not walk in his Torah, even if it is Israel. Hallelujah. It says it right here in the Torah, and I will move on. If we do not walk in the, in the statues, in the midst of the Torah, or the safety of his word, Yisrael, we shall be consumed with the fire or the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. We must remain in Gosha. We must remain in the place that Yahweh has elected us to abide in. Well, what is that place, Zakain? It is his mishpah. His Torah is our safety. It's what keeps us. 
It's what keeps me. Hallelujah. It's what guides me. I find my safety in his mishpah. Oh, does it hurt sometimes? Sure it does. Does it burn? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. But it's my safety. Hallelujah. It is my furnace. It is the finding pot. It's what purifies me. And what brings the dross or consumes the dross out of me? That what? Why? That when I open my mouth unto him, it will be a praise offering of purity, of the honesty of the essence of my nephesh, understanding all that Yahweh has done for me. Hallelujah. That will be a burning fire in my bosom that continually purifies. Hallelujah. The, the praises, our praises are so important, Israel. You, you, you can't be a people that are set apart without the praises, without the fire in your bosom, without the showing the purification. If there's no praises, there's no purification, Israel. It's just as, as simple as that. Without the furnace, the gold cannot be purified. Without the tanning pot, then the dross out of the silver cannot be separated or dipped down. So we, there must be a praises. There must be praises unto Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Must be a fire in our bosom, Israel. Hallelujah. Getting back to Ezekiel. The fire and the brimstone. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And the Hebrew is gophret, or brimstone, judgment, or even as being the breath of Almighty Yahweh. The brimstone, the fire. Yahweh, he knows how to divide his flames, his judgment, Israel, his fire, his indignation. He knows how to pour it out. It hasn't been poured out, his judgment with fury. Even though the floods came upon the Olam in the days of Noah, yet Yah says, I will not do that again. But yet here there's a fire that is coming. He's going to pour out his fire, Israel. Yeah. And it's going to consume. It's going to kill. Oh, Yah would not do that. You don't know Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. He is a consuming fire. Verse 23. He said, thus I will magnify myself. And I will cleanse, purify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Is this not showing Yahweh yet? Getting praise again, Israel, over a nation, over a people, over, over a king. And they shall know that I am Yah. I am Almighty Yahweh. I am the creator of all things. There is nothing that is in existence that I, not have, that I have not allowed to be so, Israel. Hallelujah. Let's... Let's step back a little, Israel, in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 18, verse 15. Concerning the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. We've seen the destruction of Mizraim, Egypt. And as the Kedushim, those that have been set apart, Israel, were in Gosha. Yet, there was a set and opponent time that they had to move on. We must move on, Israel. We can't abide in Mizraim. Sure, there was Gosha, but yet Yahweh, he moves us forward, Israel. Out of Gosha, there's a place he has given us. He has promised us that we must enter into. But we cannot get there, or the Melkut of Almighty Yahweh, without being purified by the fire. Hallelujah. It says in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 18, verse 15. Then Sarah, she denied. This is when Sarah, she kind of giggled or she mocked the birth in her bosom. That the, the malak or the messenger had prophesied that she would bear. Then Sarah denied saying, I laugh not. For she was afraid, and she said, nay, but you did laugh, verse 16. And the men arose, this is concerning Solomon and Gomorrah, Israel, and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abram 
went with them to bring them on the way. Are we on the way tonight, Israel, y'all? There's a path that Yahweh has set us on that we must move on, Israel, y'all. Why? Because of the pending judgment it is to come. And Yahweh said, in verse 17, And Yahweh said, Shall I hide for Abram the thing which I do? You think Yahweh is going to hide from his elect? He's going to hide from us what he's going to do, Israel, y'all. Did he hide what he was going to do for Moshe? No, he did not. Did he not tell the Nabi that we may be warned? Do we think Yahweh is hiding anything from us tonight, Israel, y'all? But yet we try to hide things from Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. He sees all things, Israel, y'all. But yet he doesn't withhold any tough thing from us. Verse 18. Seeing that Abram shall surely become a great nation and a mighty nation. And all the nations of the Olam shall be barak or blessed in him, shall receive the Berechiah, the, the blessings in him. For I know him, that he will command his sons and his household after him. Do we not recall in the Torah that I have read that we must teach our children and our children's children, Israel, yeah. concerning the Torah, all that Yahweh has done for us? Yeah. See, he said he knew, he knew Abram. He knew that Abram would be obedient and teach his sons the Torah to Mishvah. And, I will command his, and he will command his sons and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of Yahweh to do justice and judgment. That Yahweh may bring upon Abram that which he has spoken of him. Verse 20. And Yahweh said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which has came up to me. And if not, I will know. Let you know that the rock of Yahweh is in the midst of us tonight, Israel, y'all. And he knows. Even if there's a Sodom and Gomorrah that lurks within our nephesh, a place of uncleanness that provokes Yahweh, there's a will to transgress, to sin against the Torah. Let you know when his rock comes in the midst of us, he knows, Israel, y'all. Verse 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abram stood yet before Almighty Yahweh. Verse 23. And Abram drew near and said, Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Will Yahweh destroy the righteous, the Sadiq, with the wicked, Israel? Let us move on to chapter 19, verse 10. Continue with Solomon and Gomorrah. You know, I grew up, I know many of us grew up, grew up as understanding this as just being a little story. They want to, people even today want to make the Torah, the Mitzvah, a cute thing. Something that is just a, just a tale. It's much more than any cute thing. There's nothing cute about it, Israel. It is true. We see the judgment or have seen the judgment of Yahweh upon a nation and upon a people to destroy, to wipe out Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10, chapter 19. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness both small and great, so they wearied themselves to find the door. This is when the men tried to impose themselves unto the messengers of Almighty Yahweh and upon the household of Lot. And the men said to Lot, Have you here any besides son-in-law and your sons and your daughters and whatsoever you have in the city? Bring them out of this place. Verse 13, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is becoming great before the face of Yahweh and Yahweh has set us to destroy it. This is the messages. And Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-law, which married his daughters and said, up, get you out of this place. 
Is this the place that we're in, Israel? Yah? Don't you know Yahweh want us to get out of this place, of this mindset of Sodom and Gomorrah, to not be a part of the world, not to be a part of their customs, of their uh, feast days, of their Christmases and their Halloweens, Israel? Yah? This, not, this should not be found in the house of Yah. The 4th of July, celebrating, all they're doing is just celebrating the lie. There's no liberty. There's only liberty in the Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's only deliverance in the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. So Yahweh, he doesn't want us to be caught up in these things, just right, y'all. For Yahweh will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. But when the morning arose, and the Malach, the Melachim, hastened like saying, Arise, take your wife and your daughters, which are here, lest you, be, lest you shall be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Does Yahweh want us to be as consumed in the iniquity of this world, Israel? Yes, right, to be consumed? Verse 16. And while he lingered, do we linger? Why, why was he trying to procrastinate? Why were he trying to procrastinate, Israel? Yah? Understanding the judgment that was coming unto this place. And when the morning arose, the Melachim Melech, hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your sons, your two daughters, which are here, lest you shall be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Verse 16. And while he lingered, the men took hold on his hand, and upon the hands of his wife, and upon the hands of his two daughters, Good. Yahweh bringing mercy, or being merciful to him, and they took and brought them forth and set them with out of the city. Don't you know, Yahweh, his hand is not short, his arm is not short on the Israel, that he grabs us, that he protects us, that he keeps us. Many times we procrastinate, just like Lot procrastinate. But yet, Yahweh, he takes hold upon us. Why? Because we belong to him, Yisrael. Yeah. He's not going to destroy his inheritance, but he will cleanse his house, Yisrael. Yeah. He will purify the nation of Yisrael. Yeah. Anything that is not of him will be separated. Does not the Mishra say that if they were part of us or with us, then there is no doubt that those that have left or departed or that Yahweh had moved out will continually remain among us, Yisrael. Yeah. Does that, does that not say that there are those that are in the bayat that must be moved or purified or moved out? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of Yahweh will move anything. Hallelujah. That's not of him, Israel. Yeah. Even as it shook the mountains in his judgment and in his fiery indignation, there was nothing that stood. Hallelujah. Verse 16, the latter end. And they brought him forth and set him out without of the city. And it came to pass, when they brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for your life, your nephews, yeah. that which remains within you. Look not behind you. Don't you know that Yahweh has brought us out of Mizraim? He has washed us by the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Yeah. Why should we look back unto where Yahweh has brought us from? Yeah. Has it not brought us a mighty long way? Has it not picked us out of a horrible pit of sin and iniquity and bondage? Then why do we want to go back? Do we turn and look back unto the things which Yahweh said he, that displeased him, that he would destroy? Let's move on. He says, don't even look behind you. Neither stay you in all the plains. Escape to the mountain." What is the mountain? Who is this mountain, this high place? It is Yahshua. Hallelujah. It is our safety. Yes. Hallelujah. It is our Gosha, Yahshua. Lest you be consumed. So we must escape. We must enter into the safety of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, or we shall be consumed, Yisrael. And Lot said to them, Oh, not so, my master. Verse 19. Behold, now your servants have found a merited party in your sight, and you have magnified your mercy, which you have shown to me 
and saving my life. Don't you know our lives have been saved? Yes, right, y'all. Because Yahweh placed his hand upon us. Hallelujah. Don't you know that the hand upon, of Yahweh is upon us tonight, yes, right, y'all? To lead us out, hallelujah, of this Sodom or Gomorrah. He said, I cannot escape into the mountains, lest some evil take me and I die. Verse 20. Behold, now, this city is, is near to flee to, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. It is not a little one, and my soul shall live. Verse 21. And he said to them, See, I have accepted you concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city. For the which you have spoken. Verse 22. Haste you, escape there. For I cannot do anything till you come there. Before the name of the city was called Zor. So Yahweh, he's not going to do anything without letting us know. Without giving us the means or the tools that we need. To move on, Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. For he shall preserve us. Hallelujah. By the fire, he cleanses us. Hallelujah. By the fire, he purges us. He keeps us. And he judges us, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So abide in the, in the flame, in its fire, in its misfire, in its Torah, Israel. We must abide there. And if we walk in his statutes and his commandments, we will not be consumed with the heathen. Verse 23, it says that the sun was risen up and the earth, upon the earth when Lot entered into Zohar. Then Yahweh, he reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone, his judgment, his breath, his fiery indignation, and fire from Yahweh out of the Shemayim. Did we not sing the song, the windows of the Shemayim are open and the fire is falling tonight? Hallelujah. The fire of Yahweh is not a consuming fire, Israel. Verse 25. And he overthrew those cities, and not only the cities, but the surrounding plains, and all the inhabitations of the cities. There was nothing left. Not an animal, not a bug, not, there wasn't anything left. Everything was consumed in the fire, in the breath of Yah. And that which grew, drew upon the ground, everything, Verse 26, but his wife, this is concerning Lot, and also the example of the assembly, if we turn back unto those things or disobey what Yahweh have commanded, were they not commanded to look, not to look back, Yisrael, y'all? But his wife looked back from behind him. They should have been looking forward. They should have kept their eyes on the path where Yahweh was leading them, to the Melchut or the kingdom. We must have our eyes set on the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. And she become a pillar of salt. Verse 27. And Abram got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before Yahweh. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And that's what we're going to see in this nation, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. When his fiery indignation, his ish, his breath is poured out upon a wicked people and this world, we're going to be those that stand and see Yahweh's judgment upon the nations. And we shall see the smoke and the brimstone and the fire. As unto the furnace. Last verse, Yisrael, as I bring this to a close. And I will continue. I have much more on this concerning the fire, fiery in the nation of Almighty Yahweh. And it came to pass when Yahweh destroyed the cities of the plain, that Yahweh, he remembered, he's our God. Don't you want Yahweh to remember? To re remember you? To remember Yisrael? To remember his covenant? His promises? He said that we shall inherit many things. 
land, riches, wealth. And Yahweh Jakar, he remembered Abram and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. When he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, he shall deliver his people. Beside yourself, Israel, he's going to bring us out. Why? Because he has deemed us a great nation unto him. We are his prized possession, Israel. So as we commend ourselves, do we have confidence in Yahweh tonight about what he is doing, Israel? Hallelujah. As his word purges us, as gold in a furnace, as tin or as silver in the tending pot, Israel, so shall even the very praises out of our mouths shall be purified. A purified offering of fire. Hallelujah. That should be the altar, our nephesh, the place of his dwelling, of his ruah. Is that not, is that not true, Israel? Yeah. So we should offer the fire unto him. In all things. Hallelujah. Giving Toda in all things, not some things. But in all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do pray that this message has been an inspiration for you, Israel, to abide in Gomorrah, abide in the place, abide in the Torah, abide in Yahshua, Hamashiach. Because we're going to see, and we see all around us the judgments of Almighty Yahweh, and yet Yahweh, He keeps us. Hallelujah. He preserves us. Is he going to allow us to be tried? Sure he is. Are we going to be in the furnace? Sure. That's how we know we are his people. Hallelujah. He proves us in the fire of the furnace or in the trials of tribulation, Israel. But yet we should not be consumed. At the appointed time, he shall bring us forth. He shall bring us out. And when he does... We should be as pure as even the purest of gold. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. And let us shoot, let us turn. As we are still yet in bondage, but yet we have been made free by the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Abba Yahweh, we do told our you for this night, for the wealth of knowledge and truth that you have given unto us, Yahweh. Continue to feed us, Yahweh. Our minds, our lips. And our hearts are Yahweh, that we may present unto you an offering of fire and of praises unto your throne. That it may go forth unto you as a sweet-smelling savor unto your nostrils, Almighty Yahweh. We do ask that your Melikim will be accounted about those that have come from near and afar, that you will bring them to the appointed place safely, Almighty Yahweh. And touch those that are listening by via of live stream. And give those, Yahweh, that have labored today. We all have labored in your Torah and your Mishpah and your Bayat. Give us beautiful rest tonight. And as we arise in the morning, we shall give you ish. We shall give you fire. We shall give you thanksgiving, almighty Yahweh, for all that you have done for us. And all things we do barak you. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak Kol. Israel, hallelujah.